So today I wanted to talk about the latest TikTok trend called the pink lid moment. And for those who don't know what it is, here's a quick explainer. Moments where it's like the parent just unleashes their anger on the kid. They have absolutely no ability to restrain themselves when they are frustrated. They make their kid feel stupid. And then people are- Today's video is just gonna be a chill video with not heavy editing, just a vent session, if you will, while we all talk about our shitty moments with our parents. I hope you enjoy the video. I had a pink tote dad, and we haven't really talked about the pink tote dads, but let me tell you, mine was like the king of pink tote dads. He, everything was my fault. He had anger issues, so he would take everything out at me. So before I talk about my pink pink lid moment. I first want to talk about how I feel a lot of these stories are on a spectrum. On one end, there's a story of how this girl told her mom that she had a homework assignment due and the mom didn't believe her. So the mom randomly took her to a police station and the cops were like, no, you can't leave your daughter with us. That's child abandonment. What are you doing? And then on the other side of the spectrum, there are parents who take it to the extreme for over the smallest things. There was this woman who said when she was 10 that she dialed the wrong number on a phone and the other person person thought it was funny, but her father got so mad at it that he took the phone and smashed it all over the ground and started yelling at her. The reason I think it's important to put it on a spectrum is because as parents, I feel a lot of them have pink moments or these moments where you're not the best parent you could be. The way that we talk about parenthood, people think of parents as heroes or these infallible um, characters that they're not really in real life, right? So on the lower end of the spectrum, it'd be you yelling at your kid because you had a bad time or a bad day at work and you're taking that out on your kid. I've read a lot of stories of mothers getting mad at their daughters because they asked a question and the mother immediately snaps and starts yelling. This, there's a girl that's crying in her room because she's just had this interaction with her parents where they're asking her to look for something and she can't find it and she asks her mom what she's talking about and she says like, pink tote what pink tote lids or something and the mom kind of unleashes and starts yelling at her and the girl records this video of her being so upset after this interaction with her mom and it's prompted this whole thing on tiktok where so many people are now sharing like their pink tote lid moments and just for context my name is whitney goodman i'm a licensed marriage therapist and i run calling home and i run a lot of groups every month with these people and so this is something i want to tell you when i talk to adults who are estranged from their parents they have no shortage of these pink tote lid moments actually these are very common in their childhood parents deal with a lot parents are human and i feel that is important to recognize because i've seen a lot of videos from mothers who are saying oh i just seen this theory or this trend and i just realized that i might have done this to my kid i might have had a moment with my kid that is i keep coming across pink tote moments people posting about things their parents and it's hitting me really hard tonight not because of things my parents did to me but because i know my kids have had those experiences i know that i had moments that i did not handle things the best i know there were times that i was functioning at zero percent capacity without community with not enough support without knowing how to handle things and i can look back and wish i would have done things so differently and i made choices i wish i didn't make i handled things in wrong ways and I don't know how my kids feel about each situation. I mean, they're, it's theirs. They get to decide that and they get to label it, name it, whatever they choose to. And I think every parent has moments they regret, things they wish they would have done different. It's just something that we sit with as parents, knowing how much that some of us want to do it all right and knowing that we didn't. It's a hard thing to sit with. Worse that they're gonna remember for the rest of their lives. The reason I think it's important to put it on a spectrum is to remember that parents are human. They're not infallible. They make mistakes. You can make mistakes and still be a good parent. There are many moms who made videos. I wasn't the best parent at the moment that I could have, and I'm working to be better. And I think that's really hopeful and that we should remember that. On the other end of the spectrum, though, there are stories. I think you belong in prison. Why are you not in prison right now. And I think that goes to how there are bad parenting isn't really punished by the law. My entire childhood was just comprised of pink toe lids moments. I was in elementary school and I hadn't seen my mom for years because she was working in a different country. We were left with abusive family members. She came to visit and what did she do? She looked at, she inspected my notebooks to make sure it didn't have any dog ears on them. And she checked all my crayon boxes and there was one crayon that was missing and I got a beating that day. It was when she remarried, we got a stepdad, and the day after we met him, we were forced to call him dad. And if we didn't, we would get to go and do whatever she wanted with my stepdad for however long, even though we had homework and exams in the morning. It was when she kept putting men before us kids. Um, 
So there was this one story where this woman came out to her mom that she was actually a lesbian and her mom knew and accepted her. But when she told her dad, he got really mad about it and he started chasing after her. And there was a whole bunch of other stuff that happened. But the dad only got put in uh, prison or jail for a day and didn't even get charged with anything. And then after that, her mother started taking the side of her father instead of the daughter. And I think that gets to another, this video is gonna be really loose and all over the place. Um, and it's just me venting really. Uh, but I think that gets to another problem when we're talking about parenting is that a lot of parents side with each other. If they're not, I feel there's no medium where a lot of parents side with each other or they're fighting against each other and there's no medium. So I've seen a lot of cases where at first the mom agrees with the kid, but then takes the side of the father. And to me, this is different than, so for example, in 08, when we had the recession, a lot of millennials will remember this. I'm older Gen Z on the edge of Gen Z. So I remember it really well too. My parents' marriage went downhill pretty fast during the recession, the layoffs and everything. My, my parents were pretty good before then. And then after that, they were never the same. One person could argue that my life would be entirely different. I would probably an entirely different career field if my parents stayed together and didn't get divorced from the 08 crash or if the 08 crash never happened. I put a lot of strain on their marriage and as kids, you can see that you understand that that is a real thing, even if you try to hide it or whatever. But I feel that's different than your mother. It's it's unrelated. It's not a context problem. It's just foundationally your mother is, or your father is taking the side of the parent over you, that they're putting their relationship, the parent relationship over you, their kid, because they want to stay together. And I feel that happens a lot more than the economic side of it or the um, random freak occurrences side of it that happens. And I think a lot of people should be more upfront about that even. And that gets into my my moment to talk about my moment for a while. Um, so growing up, I had this nice house and we had a trampoline in the back. So me and my cousins would play on it, right? So one day we're all on the trampoline and they start fighting each other. They're two. I'm not going to say their names because it's not relevant, but they start fighting it. Cousin A and cousin, I'm not going to say their names, but I'll, so I'll just say cousin A and cousin B. So cousin A and cousin B start fighting each other on the trampoline. And I'm bro, what are you guys doing? You're insane. Anyway, um, so my stepdad at the time comes out and he gets really mad and blah, blah, blah. But somehow he turns it into me. I'm the one who started it. I'm the, I was the one who was fighting, blah, blah, blah. And I get in the worst trouble when I just wasn't even involved in the situation at all. And it made me really mad. He was screaming and yelling at me and telling me I was a liar. And I didn't lie. I wasn't involved in it. And later, even then, cousins told him, no, he didn't, wasn't even involved. And he still wouldn't change his mind because he already made up that I was guilty. But back to it is that he was so he tried to crash through a door to tell me that I was a liar when I never lied. That moment has stuck with me for the rest of my adulthood. I hate being called a liar. It's one of the worst things that really irritates me. I lie. OK, little white lies here and there. Oh, I don't, I don't want to go out because my stomach hurts with your friends or whatever. You do those white lies. We all do them. But big lies. No. I just don't say anything. When something's going bad and you could lie your way out of it, I just stop talking because um, I don't lying to people. One, it's because of my ADHD and it takes a lot of energy to keep up a lie. That's people who keep up a lot of lies at the same time are wild. Two, I just don't, I feel lying to a person, unless it helps them in some way. Your mother told me she secretly doesn't love you and you ask me about it, I'm, I'm gonna be like, no, because that's mean. Why would I tell you what I heard your mom say? I guess that's a lie by omission too. I don't know, know if that's a direct lie, maybe, I don't know. But most of the times I just don't say anything because I don't lying to people is my point that I'm trying to make. And, and so that has really left a scar on me where I get really mad. It's one of the few times that I just, I'm just, what do you, it, it is an active trigger for me. And one of the reasons I think that is, is because of that moment where he just kept accusing me of lying, even when he had proof that I didn't lie and I wasn't involved, he still wouldn't change his mind and still kept accusing me. And it was, I'm getting mad just thinking about, it. but I think that the reason I wanted to cover this video is because I feel those moments affect us more than we think that they do. And they're not talked about enough, I think, because even the small moments, right, can have a lasting impact on you or the way that you perceive the world or the way that you interact with other people. So example, I've talked to a lot of women dating where they, they don't yelling. As soon as you yell, they're just, they're gone. They're whatever. So you raising your voice, the argument, the debate, the conversation is a non-starter which is fine, but maybe that's because their father always yelled at them or their mother always yelled at them and they learn just shut it down and then to leave the situation to deescalate it. I don't think people really think about that. 
I don't yell. One of the reasons I don't yell, I'm not a big yeller at all, is because of the way that I grew up. I really hated being yelled at when he was yelling at me and calling me a liar. It was just, I just, a, a visceral reaction in my spirit. And so I don't yell at people. You have to get me to 10 out of 10. I'd have to walk in on somebody cheating on me or something for me to start yelling. Other than that, you're just not going to get me out of my character. But, and there's this joke by men who, uh, don't do well with women. Oh, you had an absent father or whatever. But nobody talks about how your parents, not even, even if they're 90% of the time are good parents, they try their hardest or whatever, but they just have a bad month. And they said the wrong thing at the wrong time at a wrong developmental moment for you. And now you just have that until you go to therapy and fix it as an adult. <laughs> and it's crazy. It, like That's really how it works for me. In all fairness to him, it was 08, stressed out, losing your job. You're just all over the place trying to figure out your financials. Maybe he wouldn't have done that if that was ever a situation. I don't know. Going back to these stories, I've seen numerous stories from women who were talking about this of how that just one conversation they've had with their father or their mother stuck with them for the rest of their lives. There's this woman who was talking about how her mother, she got fired from her job because she went to uh, two funerals while she was 17. And her mother was like, duh, why would you go to two funerals? Whatever. And then her mother, when her brother's friend uh, passed away, her mother did everything she could to help him get to the place, get to the funeral, helped him keep his job and everything, but she didn't support her daughter. I don't know why her mother did that. I'm, I'm not her mother. I can't ask her. Um, but maybe that's just a moment where in one moment, her mother was just having a bad month, a bad week, whatever. And then another, another moment, she didn't. But that small moment affected her for the rest of her life. She remembers that. We remember things. Kids listen and hear everything around us, right? When you're a kid, you remember things. And then the second trend that I notice is a complete overreaction to a small thing that your kid does. So one of the stories that this woman said was she ate ice cream out of the freezer and her mom got so mad at her that she took all the sugar in the house the donuts the pastries whatever and then put it on a plate and made her daughter eat all of it until it was gone to teach her a lesson not to eat sweets it goes back to the even the police story the complete overreaction I, the logic if there is any is that you're lying liars go to prison so hey i'm going to take you to the police station so you can understand that liars or lying will get you in prison don't lie and it's just, is that really necessary? Do you need to do that? And it's the same logic here. It's, oh, you want to eat something without my permission? Well, I'm going to make you eat all of this stuff and you're going to learn your lesson. Is that really necessary? And it's it's just this weird mindset that a lot of parents get into of they are the authority. And none of it is a reasonable response that a reasonable person would be like, yo, that's, that makes sense. If that if your kids get bad grades in school, you'd be like, okay, no, uh, no gaming for until your grades come back up. You only can watch the news stations. None of that stuff. That's fine. And then you and you stick around and you do homework and you try to help your kid get better grades. That's fine. Your kid gets bad grades and you're like, I'm taking the door off of your room and you are you don't have any privacy. And really, a bad grade is worth all of that. It's just a complete overreaction. My fault. It was my fault. If he had a rough day at work and he came down to watch the TV, we had like the Fab Five, you know, um, TV channels. So if he was watching TV and the TV didn't work for some reason, it was my fault. If he was on our DSL computer and the computer wasn't working, which mind you, I never got on because I was too scared to like mess something up and him get mad about it. If something went wrong while he was on it, it was my fault. If we were driving somewhere, like he had to take me somewhere like to school or a friend's house or whatever, and the car broke down, it was my fault because he had to take me somewhere. And I think there are people who take it too far on the left side of it where they're like, I'm not going to do anything. Oh, I'm just going to ask my kid to do everything nice. You need a structured environment where people understand how society works. But it seems in reading a lot of these stories that a lot of parents view their role not as a parenting person, but as an authority figure. And that does not make sense to me. I don't know why people do that okay so my pink tote moment is whenever i was driving to school with my dad we had already dropped off my younger sibling. so you know we were driving to school and stuff and then like i was listening to my music and like out of nowhere my dad just starts being like oh so why do you want to like look homeless and like look ugly and go to school and look ugly like that and then like i'm i'm not saying anything because like what the fuck are you t like why are you talking to me like that so he's like literally just berating me. He's like, why do you go to school looking ugly and homeless? And like, why do you want to look like that? Do you want people to think like we don't take care of you? And like, it's cool to hate your parents and stuff. And you know, I I'm still not saying anything because like, what the, f sir, you're like 50. Like, why, why are you talking to your 16 year? I was 16. Uh, why are you talking to your 16 year old child like that? 
and this keeps going um like until we get to the school and then by this point like i'm in tears and i just get out the car um and so then i get to the testing room and the entire time i'm taking the test i'm like choking back tears and like almost crying um because my dad decided to insult me while i was going to school in this in this last story why did he need to make fun of what she was wearing why was that important to him it's not that he cared if his kid was happy or not he more so cared what people would think about him that he thought she looked like a bum so people would think that he is a bum and i think it gets to the core problem that their kids are a reflection of them and therefore any time their kid messed up because their the parents self-esteem or self-image is so broken that they think that they have to go to the max to try to fix it and for everybody to think that they're okay and that they're a perfect family. It's, bro, it's not that big of a deal. Kids mess up. It's okay. It's a part of life. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it's a good vent session for you guys in the comments to share your own moments. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Peace.